Hi guys, uh, in this video we're going to practice analyzing a series circuit and we're now going to combine the graphic organizer that you see here and that you've seen, kind of seen in class we're going to combine it with the rules that we've discovered about a series circuit uh, so um, you always want to draw the circuit so you know what you're talking about I've summarized the rules here and we're going to use these rules and this table uh, to analyze this circuit, record what we know about the circuit and to calculate a couple of things. So you'll notice that I've started with a four column table. I'm going to leave that one blank for now. We'll talk about what we're going to use this column for later. I'm going to concentrate on R, V, and I because you should recognize that as Ohm's law, right? Resistance equals voltage divided by current. So when we analyze a circuit, our goal is to essentially, whenever we're trying to find something, in a homework problem, we're basically going to be trying to find probably nine times out of ten you're just trying to find what goes in one of these boxes. So uh, this is going to be a sample problem and in the sample you'll see how this kind of all comes together. So let's suppose we have a problem as follows. We have uh, a series circuit that's powered let's say by 30 volts and we have three resistors and let's say we know that R1 is uh, 10 ohms. What does that mean? If R1 is 10 ohms and on the table I could go to R1, so each row represents, corresponds to a, a component or is a resistor in the circuit, and I could say that R1 is 10 ohms. Let's say R2 is 20 ohms and R3 is 30 ohms. And we know that our total voltage is 30 volts, so voltage column, total row, 30 volts. So a typical question might be, determine all the voltages, how much voltage is dropped across each resistor, and determine how much current is flowing through the circuit, and determine the total resistance of the circuit. All three of those things. So basically, that's basically saying fill in all these boxes, okay, except for that, that last column. So to do that, let's use our series circuit rules. Now, um, just like a crossword puzzle, if you've done crossword puzzles, right, you don't know what order to do it in. What do you do? You go through each, each item or blank, right, or each clue, and you figure out, oh, do I know that? If I can't do, then I, I fill, the, fill in the column or the row as much as I can. And that's pretty much kind of the, the, the same approach here. So I can't prescribe a specific order in which to fill the, the table. You're gonna, your competency is going to build up, and pretty soon you'll find your way around. Also, it doesn't mean that there's only one way to figure out a partic to uh, fill in a particular table j based on what you've got. You could pretty much go in any order you want. So let's just dive right in and for an example. Okay, so let's suppose uh, I look at the rows first. Well, to fill in a row, remember to fill in any row, you have to use Ohm's law because that's what equates or associates R, V, and I. Well, you can already see, I've got, I've got two things that I don't know in every row. So right away, it's like, uh, I don't think I could use Ohm's Law right away this way. I don't have enough information. I need at least two boxes in each row to fill out the third. Okay, so if I can't go across, let's try going down. Uh, I got all blanks there. Nothing happening. I got all blanks here. This one's interesting because it looks like I've got all the boxes except for one. Now, what are we doing when we're going up and down? What we're doing when we're going up and down is we're using the rules about each circuit is, what's, uh, is what fills in um, up and down on this table. Across, Ohm's Law. Up and down, rules about the circuit or how the circuit behaves. For example, this one catches your eye, right? It's like, oh, I got all the boxes. I just got one missing. Well, what rule helps there? the total resistance for a series circuit is equal to the sum of the resistances. So I'm just going to add them all up. The re total resistance, 10, 20, 30, is going to be 60. And that, that, I went vertical, so I was using a rule, this rule, about a series circuit. Okay, well, see what happens? Just like in a crossword puzzle, right, as you fill one in, other things pop up. It's like, oh, wait a minute, I look across this row, I've got two boxes filled, one empty, What's the total current? I use Ohm's law, R equals, and there are a couple of ways of doing that, R equals V over I, I equals V over R, and V equals IR, if I just rewrite them, okay? 
So I could use any version of Ohm's law to try and fill in a box if looking across. Well, look, current. I've, I need current. I've got voltage and, and resistance. Uh, v over R, 30 divided by 60. I've got half an amp. That's cool. Oh, now what? Well, can't go across yet either. So let's look up and down again. Total voltage. I know it's a total of 30, but I could get that 30. The rule here is that all of these added up have to give me 30. Well, I can have, I don't know what they are, right? I might get 5, 15, and 10. So I can't fill these in yet. Let's look at current. In series circuits, there's only one current, right? All the current, that, so this current, this I total current right here, it's the same current through all the resistors. So, hey, that's easy. Now I could fill all this in automatically, no math required. Woohoo! Those are all 0.5 amps because it's a series circuit. So now I've only got one, one box empty in each row, and you can see I would just use Ohm's law over and over again. V equals I times R, right? So this is 10 times 0.5, uh, that's what, 5, 5 volts there. 20 times 0.5, 10 volts there. 30 times 0.5, uh, 15 volts. Oh, what do you know? You could, do, uh, you could double check too, right? Because now that you know this, these numbers, you go, okay, let's make sure I didn't mess up any math because if this is a series circuit, what rule applies? All the voltages have to equal each other. 5, 10, 15, add them up, you get 30. The last thing I'll, I'll show you is what we do with this last column. We'll often do power. So when we talk about power, we just have to use the equations for power to fill in this column. Now the re reason we put them in the table is because that way you have all the information right in front of you to calculate power. Um, but it's best to think about it as its own like appended column in a sense. So that way when you're looking across and you're trying to figure out Ohm, when, when you can apply Ohm's law, you're really just looking at these three rows, right? R equals V over I. The power equations, you could look them up, just look in your notes, but power is equal to I V or if you substitute in any of these for any of those, you get a couple more variations. You could have I squared R, or power is equal to V squared over R. And so for power, it's a little bit more straightforward. You really, I mean, you, 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 you could put it in because sometimes you, you could use these guys, right? How do you, how can you use these equations? They can also go across, right? So if I need power, I've got V over here, R over here, or I might have I and R, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you could do all of these calculations, okay? I'm just gonna use I times V because that's the simplest. P equals IV, uh, 2.5, 2.5 watts, units, watts. Uh, 0.5 times 10, five watts. 0.5 times 15, seven and a half watts. Uh, for total power, the nice thing is, no matter what kind of circuit, series or parallel, the total power is literally just the total power. So 2.5, 7.5, 10, plus 5, 15 watts. Okay? Now an interesting check is to go across now. And you could try different combinations to make sure, if you wanted to, that, that all, the, all the pieces match together. So a final note, um, besides the math, really I hope you'll take away that this table lets you analyze a circuit in the same way that you would do a crossword puzzle where you're just looking to fill in specific cells based on how many you have already know. And secondly, it also feels a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle in the sense that all the numbers have to fit together. So um, once you've got your table set up, you could also go, hey, is, does the whole picture make sense? Do my total values match up based on the rules of the circuit? Do the powers make sense both this way and this way, right? Does my total power, does that jive if I look at my power across this way? All right, in the next video, uh, uh, we're going to look at the same approach for a parallel circuit.